Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. About 10 years ago, I visited the Netherlands because I had a, a word to say in an Islamic conference in Amsterdam. And as I entered the conference, a Dutch man stopped me and he had a cameraman with him. Um, and he asked me uh, to, if I can make an interview with him, if he can interview me on camera. And he introduced himself as a messianic rabbi. Of course, I don't understand what this means. He said, I want to ask you some questions. I told him, look, I am entering the conference right now because I have something to say there. I have a word and maybe more uh, events. So, and, and, and such uh, uh, talks can take time. So let's arrange a suitable time. Because I found him interesting as a messianic rabbi. Uh, so I said to myself, well, let's do it. <laughs> uh, and he was happy with that. Um, and, and he told me, well, how could we make a long, good interview with you? I said, then come to my hotel and we can meet there in one of the rooms, uh, uh, conference rooms, and we can do that. And I gave him an appointment. <clears throat> the Muslims who were organizing the conference told me that uh, what I did was wrong and that this man is very hostile to Islam and Muslims and he will take my video and edit it, uh, manipulate what I said, and uh, he will completely distort my answers. And he will even put words um, uh, 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 in my mouth that I didn't say. So I told him, so, uh, well, we can also film the interview so that if he distorts the video with editing, uh, we will expose him in the original copy and show that this video is doctored. They said he would ask questions that may cause problems. And it is better to cancel this interview. Please apologize to him and cancel the interview. I said Islam does not have any weak point and we should not fear anything. And I will not cancel this interview. Uh, I told them, please just come and bring a video camera with you. Indeed, on the meeting's day, he arrived at the hotel with a cameraman, with a big camera and a big tripod and lights and everything. And of course, at that time, I, was, I, I, I made my research on the internet to see who he is. Um, I could almost know uh, that nearly, I got ready for everything that he says about Islam. So I, I, I checked what he says and what are, are the misconceptions that he uses against Islam. So I got ready with good answers for him. Uh, and we found a place in the hotel, like a small conference room, and um, uh, he interviewed me. He put on his camera, and so we did put on our camera. He said, what's that? No. Uh, sorry, it, we are the only ones who would film. I said, why? He said, just us who would film. I told him, we will also film so that none of us manipulates the video. Both of us would film the interview. He said, no, no, just us uh, who would film. And after that, we will give you a copy of the video. So I told him, it's an old trick. Try to play another one. I used not to believe these people because these enemies of Islam can never be trusted. The result of anything they say will be exactly the opposite. When he says, I will give you a copy of the video, it means I will not give you a copy of the video. Those people are liars, big fat liars. So. <clears throat> He said, when he says, uh, we will not manipulate the video, it means that he will do a lot of cut and paste in the video. Um, so anyway, I, I, I insisted and we had to go with my plan. And he started asking me and I reply. That's how we started the interview. All his questions have hovered around misconceptions about Islam, Sharia, invasions, conquering, uh, futuhad, jihad, uh, terrorism, and everything related to such subjects. He asks, and I reply, 
uh, alhamdulillah, it was a good uh, session. And I did well, alhamdulillah, because I was ready for him. And the video is online, by the way, okay, on the internet, uploaded on, on my channel. Um, when we came back to Egypt, when I came back to Egypt, uh, we are the ones who uploaded it first. He objected and said, why did you do that? We agreed that we are the ones who were supposed to upload it, not you. I said, no, we didn't agree on that. You have the video and I have it too. You are supposed to be a decent man and you will not manipulate my video. Let the audience see it as it is. Well, after, because I was sure that he is not going to upload the video because I already answered well every misconception. So I uploaded it. Well, after all of that, he didn't use this video at all and he never uploaded it because with Allah's grace, I had prepared well for him. And I think that Allah granted me good answers on that day. So our uploading of the video to the internet prevented him from doing any montage or any editing or any manipulation. And at the same time, if he publishes it, if he publishes it, he has to publish it as it is exactly. It would be as if he was uh, publishing a defense of Islam. So he would never publish it, of course. So he never published that video. After a year, he wanted to provoke Muslims. So he made a video in which a person opens the Quran, puts, putting it on his lap and desecrates the Quran. He's putting the Quran on his lap and he brought a dog and let it smell and lick the pages of the Quran. Um, when I saw this video, I was very upset. And I, 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 he said, it won't work anymore that every uh, frivolous uh, person like him in the West who wants to be famous will go and desecrate the Quran. Then he shelters with the articles of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and then says that he was threatened with uh, being killed or something. So they just want to be famous. Anyone who wants to be famous goes and does that. <clears throat> so, uh, in order not to make him, you know, uh, that famous, I responded to him when he called me again and wanted to interview me again when he learned that I am going to attend a youth camp uh, in the Netherlands, in the outskirts of, of, uh, of the Netherlands. Before I went there, uh, when I received his email from the, uh, uh, actually the email from the organizers, they said that this man, his name is Ben Cook, by the way, called them and demanded that if he can interview me again in this conference. And he will bring cameras and, and cameramen and it will really cost him a lot. Uh, because they were, uh, and he, they were preparing for a big movie. So he wants me to be in that movie. I told them, indeed, he is welcome to come. Uh, and, and, and they actually, the organizers told me, we know that you are not going to apologize and to, to, uh, you will accept, but we really wish that this time you don't accept the interview. I said, no, please tell him to come. I will not apologize. Uh, and you will see who is the one who will apologize. Ask him to come. They said, okay. They sent him a notice that uh, you are welcome to come. He said, I will travel all that way. So you can't tell me to come and then he doesn't accept the interview. They said, well, Father Solomon accepted the interview and he said that he confirmed that he will do an interview with you. Because he, the place of the camp was very far actually. So anyway, um, he came. After all that, he came. It's a very nice camp uh, for new Muslims especially. And we started. And then um, they told me that Ben Cook called and asked when the interview can take place. Uh, I said it will be more suitable for me that on the very last day of the camp, he can come. The camp finishes at around six o'clock. So his appointment will be 
at six o'clock. We finish the camp, we do the interview with him. The new Muslims can even sit and attend my interview with him to learn how to respond to questions and stuff like that. Uh, they said, okay, but he, and he, there will be a lot of traffic jams and stuff. He said, I said, he can come earlier, no problem, and wait. Indeed, on the last day, he arrived on time. The camp was concluded at six, and I announced to the new Muslims uh, about the interview between me and him, and uh, demanded them to attend. I told them the subject would not be long. It's not going to take time, but please come. <clears throat> The cameramen who were hired by him set up their cameras and lighting and uh, everything was fine. They put their cameras and we put our cameras too. The Muslims sat at tables forming a U-shaped table uh, in the hall. And he and I were sitting in front of them on like a panel. And he started the interview with some vain words of welcoming and stuff. Then he said, May you clarify the concept of God in Islam? I said, I will respond to all of your questions, but don't hurry. Allah's willing, I will respond to everything you ask. But is it true that you are the one who filmed a movie in which a dog was licking the Quran? He said, yes, of course, I did that. I, I am the one who made that movie to make Muslims know that the Quran is just an ordinary book. I told him, well, I would like to tell you that your act hurt me personally and hurt all Muslims who are existing in this hall right now. So could you please apologize to me and to them for all the things you did in that movie? He said, I could not apologize. Of course, he knows that his apology will be shot on camera, by our camera at least, on video, and that we will use it. And we will use it to actually embarrass him. So he refused to apologize. Then he said, we are here in the Netherlands and we have freedom of expression and freedom of speech. And I said also, we are here in the Netherlands and we have the right to refuse the interview with you. He said, but you accepted the interview and I'm coming from a place far away, more than two hours by cars and I hired cameras and cameramen. I told him, I did not refuse to sit with you and I did not refuse to do an interview with you, but you are the one who is refusing to apologize for insulting us. You have directed your insults towards us. I will not sit with you if you don't apologize. I won't sit with you, so you will be the one who refuses the interview, not me. I told him, and now I have to leave. He asked, okay, could any other person, any other Muslim come and sit uh, 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 in my uh, uh, seat so for the interview? Because he just wants to do anything, well, any, uh, shoot anything there. And he was very sorrowful for the money he paid and the costs he spent. I said, just so you know, I don't want to speak with you or even see you again. Then I stood up to leave, so he started provoking the people there by saying, I want a person to sit with me and even speak, because we want to know why your prophet killed 270 million human beings. So I understood that he was provoking us to make one of us say, okay, that's a lie. He just wants someone to respond to anything so that he can take this on camera. He just wants someone to, he's provoking us as he's saying Prophet Muhammad killed 270 million people. Maybe the, the, the population of the world at that time wasn't 200 million people. So uh, uh, he is dragging us to continue the dialogue with him. So I came back again. I went back from, I was nearly at the, at the door. I came back and I held the microphone and I said, 
I will not sit with you because Allah commands us to do so in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, for he has surely bestowed upon you from on high in the scripture that when you hear Allah's signs being denied or ridiculed, then do not sit with them until they engage in some other discourse. You would then be like them. So Allah is forbidding Muslims from sitting with people who ridicule the Quran. And we do not accept to be like you. Because Allah says, if you sit with them, you will be like them. And we don't, none, none, no one here in this room accepts to be like you. And then I stood up and all the audience stood up and we left the room, leaving him alone with his cameraman. And we took on our cars and buses and left him there with his cameraman, not knowing what to do, stunned. The lesson here is that anyone who calls to Allah is supposed to ask very well before he accepts any invitation, uh, an invitation to talk somewhere with some people, he should ask about who exactly are the audience and who are those people with him on the panel so that he can check them and check their agenda. And what, they are, what, what are they really about? Why do they want this meeting? And why did they organize it? So if it will benefit Islam, he should do it. But, and, and of course, when, and he should get prepared well for it. And if it's harmful for Islam, he doesn't have to continue and has to withdraw. Uh, and you should not sympathize with a person who despises Islam, never, or insults Islam, or dares to, 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 to insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his prophet or his religion or his book. Your religion is your blood and your flesh. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.